the Kursk region, the Russian army carries out daily attacks on the positions of Ukrainian forces. At the same time, the enemy steps on the same rake as it acts on the basis of incorrect intelligence. As a result, this leads to numerous losses in the ranks of Putin's army. A week after the start of a new counter-offensive in Kursk region, with the aim of driving out Ukrainian forces from there, the enemy is suffering staggering losses, but has not achieved any major successes Forbes reports. During this period, Putin's army only managed to gain a foothold in Pogrebki, but this is very little consolation against the backdrop of heavy losses along the western and northern sides of the Kursk salient. Experts say there is more than one problem here. The fact is that there are not so many roads on the northern and western salients, so the enemy has to attack along the same route. It is also unclear who and how provides information to the Russian army about the location of the Ukrainian armed forces. As a result, all attacks by Putin's army are predictable. This leads to large losses, said the operator of the Ukrainian armed forces drones Kriegsforscher. In a week of fighting in the area of Zeleny Shlyak, he has already counted 88 units of destroyed enemy armored vehicles. Just November the 12th, 11 Russian vehicles from the 51st Airborne Regiment, as well as the 155th and the 810th Marine Brigades of the Russian Armed Forces were destroyed. The enemy attacks every day. The Russians are confronted by forces of the 17th, 41st, 47th and 95th Brigades of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. They meet Putin's army with artillery, mines, drones, tanks and missiles. A striking example of the inaccuracy of the enemy intelligence is the events of November the 7th. On that day, the occupiers from the 810th Brigade in their new BTR-82s were destroyed at close range by Ukrainian defenders. It is possible that the local commanders assured their superiors from above that all roads to Pogrebki were allegedly controlled by Russian forces. It is logical that after such information, the Russian Defense Ministry gave the order to attack the village. However, the occupiers did not control the road and did not even clear this section of the front. In general, deliberate misinformation of the general staff by the command of the 810th Brigade has become a common practice, said Ukrainian Armed Forces serviceman Romanov. By passing false information up their chain of command and then passing false orders back, Russian commanders in Kursk are setting their troops up for bloody tactical failures. This means they are likely to suffer catastrophic losses regardless of the battle's final outcome. The main advantage of the Russians, as it was in all wars, is their numbers. Now in Kursk region, 20 to 30,000 Ukrainian defenders are fighting with 50,000 of Putin Kim's Arya. The most important thing is that the Ukrainian armed forces know about the attacks of the Russian armed forces. They know how, where and when they come. All that is required from the Ukrainian forces is to lay mines, set up artillery, launch drones and wait for a new wave of attacks. The Ukrainian Defense Forces operation in the Kursk region has been ongoing for 100 days. During this time, the enemy has shelled its own territory 11,578 times, citing the Operational Command North. According to the Ukrainian Armed Forces, by leveling their own settlements and killing their own citizens, the Russians have dropped 3,243 guided aerial bombs and 356 unguided aerial rockets on their own land. In addition, over the past 100 days, the Russians have dropped 2,462 explosive devices from drones and used 2,175 FPV drones. Meanwhile, Ukrainian forces have burned dozens of armored vehicles and destroyed hundreds of enemies on the Kursk front. The defense forces began the operation in the Kursk region at the beginning of August. Ukrainian troops took control of dozens of settlements and created a buffer zone in the border areas of the Russian Federation. The Russian army conducted a series of offensive actions to retake the territory. The Russian army has also engaged North Korean soldiers in battles in the Kursk region. According to the NYT, Russia has gathered 50,000 troops in the Kursk region, including North Korean soldiers, for an offensive. As President Volodymyr Zelensky explained, the Kursk operation was a preemptive move as there was information that the Russians were preparing an offensive on the Sumy region. 
Moscow's bombings on its own territory have seemingly intensified, with accidental bombs that have fallen on Russia and the occupied territories of Ukraine exacerbated by intentional attacks on Kyiv troops in Kursk. The Kremlin has previously admitted that its aircraft have mistakenly bombed territory under Russian control, with many of these instances taking place in the Belgorod region, which shared a border with Ukraine in the west of Russia. Between March and October, a total of 130 Soviet FAB aerial bombs have accidentally fallen on Russian land or occupied territory, according to calculations by Astra, a Russia-Ukraine war reporting telegram channel. But on top of this, Russia has fired glide bombs at Ukrainian troops near the border of Russia's western Kursk region. Russia previously fitted their FABs with unified planning and gliding modules systems, which equip the bombs with wings and satellite guidance to enable the Russians to launch the bombs at Ukrainian targets directly from Russian territory. Bombs with an abnormal descent are not supposed to explode, left to be destroyed by explosive experts after the fact, but this is not always the case in reality. On May the 4th, during strikes on the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv, a Russian plane dropped a FAB 500 on Belgorod, which ended up injuring seven people and damaging 31 houses. Russia had started deploying modified Soviet-era FAB 500s with an attached wing and navigation kit earlier in 2023 as an alternative to dwindling precision-guided missiles. Military expert Ruslan Leviev said that although the glide bombs retrofitted guidance systems are unreliable, only a fraction of these bombs fail, so it doesn't affect the practical effectiveness of this weapon, no matter how cynical that may sound.